Good morning, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy to welcome you here to our service of worship at the Fount Church in Fountain Valley, California. I am Pastor Glenn Hayworth, and I'm happy to welcome you. And uh, we are glad to be here on this first Sunday after Christmas. If you missed Christmas Eve, uh, by the way, uh, we have the opportunity for you to, to watch it again. It's posted on our YouTube channel, The Service uh, of Lessons and Carols, as well as our on Facebook. You can rewatch it on Facebook. And we've also um, um, separated out some of the musical numbers from our Christmas Eve service, and those uh, videos are available to watch also on YouTube. So we invite you to do that and uh, enjoy that service if you didn't get to watch it on Christmas Eve, or if you just want to watch it again, like I have a couple of times. Who, who am I kidding? It's five or six times. Uh, but it's a lot of fun, and uh, we had a good time doing that. We have something special coming up this week uh, for New Year's Eve, and uh, Rick Seaver, our Family Ministries Director, is going to uh, tell you all about it. Rick? Hey, guys. Um, I know you're all a bunch of party animals, and you had crazy plans for New Year's, but that got canceled, right? Just like everything else has been canceled. So we thought we would offer you something fun to do on New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve at 5 p.m., you can join us on Facebook Live to just watch, or if you'd like to participate in a really fun family game night, you'll need to go on Zoom, join us on Zoom. Um, the, the Zoom login information will be available, what, on our website? Or probably by email. We don't want any Zoom bombers. So <laughs> if you'd like to, uh, to play some trivia games with us, um, we'll do some, uh, some uh, Pictionary, like a lot of fun stuff. It'll all be online. It'll be easy. We'll help you through the whole process. Um, if nothing else, you can just join us on the Zoom call. And we also have some prizes. We have an all-expenses-paid trip somewhere, and uh, you could win a car. There's a lot of cool prizes. I, no, really, there's a car. There's a, you could win a car. Um, so I hope you will join us on Thursday, New Year's Eve, at 5 o'clock uh, on Zoom for that. Uh, if you need help getting on Zoom, call us um, this week during office hours, and me and Pastor Glenn and Julie can help make sure that you know how to get on to Zoom. So we hope you see you on New Year's Eve. All right, and that's 5 p.m. Pacific time, by the way. If you're joining us from other time zones, uh, do, the, do the math and figure that out. Uh, and it'll be on Facebook Live as well as on Zoom. So, uh, but you won't be able to participate as much on Facebook. So if you're on Zoom, then you can participate more in the games. All right, I'm looking forward to that. Let's, uh, let's pray together. Oh, one other thing. Next Sunday is our first Sunday of the year tradition to do the Wesley Covenant service. Uh, that is where we reaffirm our faith and uh, uh, recommit ourselves to following Jesus in the new year. That'll uh, be part of both services, both the 9 o'clock and here on the 1030 live stream service. So I hope you're looking forward to that. It's always a very powerful and meaningful service uh, that we do here at the Fount. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we're so grateful for the opportunity to gather around uh, wherever we are and to share in this time of worship. Bless us as we sing our praises and lift our hearts to you. In this uh, first Sunday after Christmas, we're mindful of the gift of the Christ child and for uh, the kingdom of God, which uh, is breaking into our world through Jesus. Help us, God, to live forth uh, in the world uh, with the spirit of Jesus and to offer ourselves as uh, living testimonies to who he is and what he can do in a life transformed by his spirit. Bless us today and watch over us in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Before we go to our opening hymn, I want to encourage you to uh, share your prayer concerns on our Facebook uh, comment section. If you have a joy or a concern that you'd like to have included in our prayer time, then go ahead and type those into the comment section and uh, we'll do our best to include them into our time of prayer. Now, a stranger you haven't seen for a few weeks. Cindy is going to lead us in our opening hymn. Good morning. Our opening hymn this morning is He is Born, number 228, if you have the Methodist hymnal. Otherwise, just follow along. Oh, 
drop my pick. Hold on. All right, we are going to do a children's song today, and Katie is not here because she's in Arizona, and uh, Christine is not here because she's somewhere else. So I'm going to do this by myself. I hope my wife appreciates the fact that I didn't ask her to do the motions for this song. All right, good to hear. <laughs> We're going to sing Go Tell It on the Mountain. So if you know it, sing it loud. If you know some motions, do the motions, do a little wiggling, whatever you're going to do. But let's Go Tell It on the Mountain, just the first verse and the chorus. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens, there showed up. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. Do the verse again. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens, there shone a holy Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. Amen. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Hey, Ed, come check out my North Star Christmas tree topper at Levitate's. Is this a gummy bear? Yeah, we lost baby Jesus. Hey, check out these LED lights. I have them synced up to a 76-hour all-Christmas music playlist. There's my little Christmas DJ. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you waiting till Christmas is over so you can go buy a new nativity set when they're on sale? Huh? No. No, oh no. We lost baby Jesus like 11 years ago. Is, is baby Jesus always a gummy bear? Oh, no, no, oh, we trade it out every year. Yeah, like uh, last year it was a uh, tiny troll doll. <laughs> and the year before that we used a uh, dog treat. They were the perfect size, but <laughs> Dalton kept taking them and eating them. You, you mean your dog kept stealing them? No, my son Dalton, he loves those dog treats. Especially the peanut butter ones. There was one year that we used a, uh, a doll head. That was creepy. We, we made a modeling clay, baby Jesus. So the dog took that one, too. Um, one year, we got desperate and used an ice cube. That was a miss and a mess. Yeah, just seems like everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never lasts. Say that again. Everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never seems to last. And? And what? Say it again, slowly. Why? Just do it, dulcimo, slowly, do it. I don't understand what's happening. Just do it. This is getting weird. Dang it! Fine! But when I'm done saying this, you're gonna march in here, and you're gonna watch my star levitate. I'm fine, 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 do it. Fine. Everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never seems to, oh, yep, there it is. Okay, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I love the skit guys. They do a great job, don't they? Everything we try to replace the baby Jesus with just never lasts. Amen to that. That sermon is right there. I, there's nothing more I can say. All right, but we're going to pray now. So if you have uh, joys and concerns, uh, I hope hopefully you've uh, pasted them or typed them into the um, uh, feed, uh, the comment section. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I see a sum, so I'll have to sort through them. So, uh, um, yeah, okay. 
So Jim Liming, one of the members of our church, uh, well, okay, here comes some text. That'll help me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Uh, yes. Well, let's see. It's not showing up. Jim Liming, uh, his family uh, could use some prayers this week as several of them, including, including Jim, have tested positive for COVID-19 very recently. So we want to keep Jim and his family in our prayers uh, this week. Um, let's see. Looking for some other prayer requests here. Um, I have it right here. Kevin uh, or Karen Olson is praying praying for you and your family, Karen and Dennis. Um, that was in response to Jim. Let's see. Yes, thank you. Um, Pray for the Lord to strengthen um, grandson Nico and Denise's fragile marriage. Continued prayers for Don Westerdorf, fighting brain cancer in Maynard, Iowa. Cindy asked for prayers, continued prayers for her brother. Prayers for the Lord's abundant blessings for the McFarland family, the Stewarts, the Smiths, the Mercedes, for Myra, for uh, Marguerite, and... Uh, others who are ill. Pray for the Lord to show the Seaver family a more permanent home. Pray for uh, Mike Whitmore's friends, Kim and Mary Ann, both have COVID. And uh, Myra asked for prayers for her friend Wanda with COVID. So lots of folks, lots of folks with COVID this week. So and we want to include them in our prayers. Also, we want to uh, continue to pray for our nation and uh, the unity of our nation following the elections and uh, for peace in the world uh, during the season of Christmas. Uh, yes, we are praying for Shelley, who is sick today, and that wonderful piano playing you've heard in the background is Kevin today. Kevin Nguyen is uh, playing accompaniment for us today while Shelley is at home uh, uh, recovering, hopefully quickly. Uh, not, no, not that, I didn't mean that, Kevin, like that sounded. Uh, you're doing great. <laughs> uh, let's see. Kevin asked for prayers for his grandfather, his dad's dad, who was in critical condition in Vietnam, but is now stable. Uh, so we're praying for recovery. Um, yes. All right. Any others? George asked for us to remember him, so definitely pray for him. Christmas is always a very difficult time if you've lost a loved one, and uh, we're remembering Vicki during this season, indeed. All right, let's see if there's any more come in. All right, let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we're so grateful for the opportunity to um, worship, the technology that makes it possible for us to worship. We long for the day when we can come back into the sanctuary and worship there, uh, here, uh, but we thank you for this opportunity to worship. We do confess that uh, we have fallen short of the expectations that you have for us as followers of Jesus, that we have not loved you with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We've not heard the cry of those in need, and we have uh, abandoned in many respects uh, our walk of faith uh, this week. Forgive us, God. Set our feet solidly on the path and... Uh, and help us to walk in righteousness this coming week. We pray for our neighbors, our community, our state, and our nation. We pray for the world. We pray for the elimination of the COVID virus that uh, through whatever means you choose to use, Lord, just rid this world of this terrible plague and help us to, to uh, recover and be restored. Uh, we pray for the businesses that are, that are hurting during this time, the people, uh, families that are without income, uh, we pray for them. We pray, as we've already mentioned, for the many people suffering from COVID. We pray for those in uh, medical care, doctors and nurses and others, for uh, EMT uh, serve workers and uh, police and firefighters. We pray, God, that you would protect them, keep them safe, and help them to uh, uh, be able to return to their homes safely uh, once they're 
once their tasks and mission is complete. Help us, God, to reach out to others and to uh, offer a word of encouragement and strength uh, during these very difficult times. Uh, help us to, to be representatives of you uh, throughout our, our extended network of, of friends and family. For we pray today as we pray every day in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is time for the offering. And we are uh, happy to be able to, uh, uh, to have the opportunity to give in support of the ministries of this church. There are several ways that you can give. You can mail a check into the fount at 18225 Bouchard, B-U-S-H-A-R-D Street, in Fountain Valley, California, 92708. You can go to our website at thefount.church, click on the online giving tab, and make your contribution that way. Or you can text the word give to the number there on your screen, and uh, it will be, uh, you will be led through the process of making an online gift. And once you make that first gift, by the way, subsequent gifts are very easy. You don't have to put in all the information again. It's, uh, it's, it's right there. So um, however you give, we thank you for your generosity uh, to, the, to the fount and to our mission and ministries throughout the world as we, uh, as we continue to serve him even in the midst of uh, this pandemic. Now, our uh, quartet uh, is going to provide an encore performance of uh, a song that was recorded for the uh, Christmas Eve service, the Wexford Carol. Here's our wonderful quartet. Shepherds keep their flocks of lambs and feeding sheep, to whom God's angels did appear, which put the shepherds in great fear. Prepare and go, the angels said, to
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we're so grateful for the generosity of your people. We thank you for their ability to give and their willingness to give. And we pray that you would bless us, Lord, to use the gifts received to further your kingdom's goals here on earth and throughout the world. We pray that you would guide us, that you would help us to make decisions that are in accordance with your will, to move our church and our community forward in the ways of God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you'll please join us for our scripture reading this morning, coming from the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. God bless the reading of his word. Now, if you have a hymnal at home, we are going to be singing number hymn, hymn number 242, Love Came Down at Christmas. Please join us. I want to share with you a uh, uh, version of 1 Corinthians 13, the Christmas version of 1 Corinthians 13, author unknown. It goes like this. If I decorate my house perfectly with plaid bows, strands of twinkling lights and shiny balls, but do not show love to my family, I'm just another decorator. If I slave away in the kitchen baking dozens of Christmas cookies, preparing gourmet meals and arranging a beautifully adorned table at mealtime, but do not show love to my family. I'm just another cook. If I work at a soup kitchen, carol in the nursing home, and give all that I have to charity, but do not show love to my family, it profits me nothing. If I trim the spruce with shimmering angels and crocheted snowflakes, attend a myriad of hol holiday parties and sing in the choir's cantata, but do not focus on Christ, I have missed the point. Love stops the cooking to hug the child. Love sets aside the decorating to kiss the spouse. Love is kind, though harried and tired. Love doesn't envy another's home that has coordinated Christmas china and table linens. Love doesn't yell at the kids to get out of the way, but is thankful that they are there to be in the way. Love doesn't give only to those who are able to give in return, but rejoices in giving to those who can't. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Video games will break. Pearl necklaces 
will be lost. Golf clubs will rust, but giving the gift of love will endure. You know, Christmas is all about love, the love of God. Love came down at Christmas, as we just sang, and it was totally God's initiative. Someone has said that Jesus is God spelling himself out in language that we can understand. We did nothing to deserve God's love, but he emptied himself to become one like us. The technical term of that is incarnation or infleshing, taking on bodily form. Listen again to this passage, short passage from Galatians 4, 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, And if a child, then also an heir through God. Let's break that down a little bit more. In verse 4, it says, In the fullness of time. The word there is kairos, not like time on a clock, which is chronos, but kairos, God's appointed time, a decisive moment, the right time, never late. And in that kairos time, God sent his son, born of a woman, This was a tricky point for the early church, that Christ was actually born in human form. That's why Paul says born of a woman and not born of a virgin, because the virgin birth was not a problem for them. It was the virgin birth that was a problem for the ancient mind. They would prefer that Christ appear out of nowhere, that God would stoop so low as to take on human form was beyond the imagination of Paul's readers. Then he said, born under the law. Jesus was a Jew, obligated to keep the law of Moses. This was a major issue at Galatia, where some some were trying very hard to get the Christians to return to full observance of the Mosaic law, teaching that salvation came through the law. But Jesus, who was under the law, came to set them and us free from slavery to the law in order to redeem those who are under the law, says verse 5. Redeem means to set free or to liberate. God came in Jesus to set the world free by grace and adopted us as children. Adoption is a gift from God's love. There's a story of of a teacher, Debbie Moon, whose first graders were discussing a picture of a family, and one little boy in the picture had a different color hair than the other family members. And one child suggested that he was adopted, and a little girl said, I know all about adoption because I was adopted. And another child said, what does it mean to be adopted? It means, says the girl, that you grew in your mommy's heart instead of her tummy. The father's heart loves us, so that he is willing to adopt us as his own, even at the cost of his only begotten son's life. Remember, Jesus is God spelling himself out for us. And he sent the spirit of Jesus into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, verse 6. Abba is an Aramaic word which means daddy or papa. It's a very personal form, never used in Judaism to address God directly. It indicates a close, personal, intimate relationship. Adoptions in Rome required a witness of the transaction, and the Holy Spirit performs this function for God's adoption of us as his children. As we read in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, echoes a lot of the same themes as our Galatians passage. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you've received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. And then it says in verse 7, and heirs of the kingdom. 
we stand to inherit the kingdom of God, which means that all of God's blessings are ours. In the Old Testament, the land of Israel is often referred to as the Israelites' inheritance, all without God having to die to pass on the inheritance, of course. It reminds me of the scene in The Lion King where Mufasa shows Simba all of the pride land and tells him that one day all of this will be his. What does it mean for us, this adoption and heirs of the kingdom? It means that God has stepped in to history and provided for us. That God sent his son in order to redeem us and to receive us as his own children and heirs. So God is no longer an absent, removed deity with whom we cannot relate. God is now daddy. J.W. Stevenson in his book, God in My Disbelief, tells how Dr. Christopher, an old minister, had gone south to London to seek for his son who had dishonored his home and left father and mother. There was no address to guide him, only after many days was the name of the street discovered, and when the old minister with his white hair stood at the end of the street, he knew it was beyond him to go from door to door its entire length. But a street musician came by just then, and Dr. Christopher stopped him. Did he know an old tune, one that had been a favorite in the home when the children were young? Would he walk with him along the street as he played? And he told him why. So they went slowly, the street musician and the old minister, with his hat in his hand so that his face could be seen, taking this last slender chance to find the son who had no use for him, seeking him who had no understanding of the love in his father's heart. That's just like our God, who doesn't force us to return to him. Rather, he woos us. He sings to us, hoping that the tune will remind us of his love for us. It's a tune sung by the angels hovering over Bethlehem. It's sung by the shepherds as they hurry to see this thing that the Lord has made known to them. It's sung by the wise men who come to acknowledge the newborn king. And it's sung by the baby and Mary and Joseph as they wonder at what God was up to. And finally, it's sung from the cross as God takes the extraordinary step to take our punishment for us. And you can hear the song begun on Christmas morning, its refrain echoing against the hills outside Jerusalem as Jesus steps from the tomb on Easter morning. It's God's song. It's the song of creation and the song of redemption. And as children and heirs, it's our song. Let's spend a few moments in prayerful reflection as we consider what God may be saying to our hearts today. Let's worship in song.
So God, we thank you for this season of Christmas time, this beautiful season of lights and uh, memories, mag magic, friends and family, gifts, parties, festivities, rich foods. Oh, thank you, God, for all the ways that you bless us and for coming into our world and encouraging us to walk in the ways of Jesus. Love incarnate, love divine, star and angel gave the sign. Bow to babe on bended knee, the savior of humanity. Unto us a child is born, he shall reign forevermore. No
Christ, the Savior of the world, he has come. be to God on high. Thank you for joining us today. God bless you. God be with you until we meet again next week. Same time, same place. God be with you. Amen.